still about 20 minutes away from the casting, I would say. So, I'm only heating the, the bronze up to a temperature of about 1050 to 1100 centigrade in here. There. So there's a little pot inside the furnaces. And the charcoal surrounding it and the air brings it up to the temperature of, of about uh, 1200 degrees the charcoal. Shall I wrap it while you hold it? Yeah. Keep it fairly dry. How do you get the mold? What do you do? Do you just plaster that around the thing? And around the wax, you yeah. You start with the wax. Yeah. Yeah. It's the lost wax process we're using here. Yeah. So you make a wax object and then you coat it with several oh, layers right, of this. Alright, with that. Because yeah. What is it? Cow dung? It's clay. Clay is the binder. Right. So, but if you would you just use clay, it would crack and right. pop. And right. So you add a lot of sand or rock or old mold material to it, right. which uh, makes it a it's a refractory, so that right. makes it crack right. resistant. And then you add horse dung as well, which almost works like fiberglass yeah. in a uh, in yeah, resin. So this makes it quite strong. But also when that's burned out, it creates little a little capillary system in, inside yeah. the mold, so the air can go through it, yeah. it can breathe. Yeah, so it's quite a clever, ah, okay. clever yeah. way. Mm. Yeah. And what do you pour it? What is it? Molten bronze, and you pour yeah. on there? Yeah, yeah. We're near. we about five minutes away from doing it. Right. Yeah. Stand a little bit back. One, two steps. That's perfect. So I'll just quickly explain what we will be doing here in the next uh, two minutes. James is putting a little mold in there, which has a little um, chisel in it. And uh, he made that out of wax first, and then he dipped the wax into this mix of clay, sand, and horse dung, which creates our molds. So there are a few baking here, and you can still see the wax in there. And then they get mold melted out and baked, so they're kind of really burned out completely. They're like a kind of a mug, then ceramic. And that's what we have there at the moment. So in the meantime, we melted the metal in here, which is bronze to about uh, 1100 degrees so it's molten now and I'm about to pour that into there so we have our little uh, chisel yeah it's a bronze age method tin and copper that's right yeah we have the two there so we have 90 percent copper nine parts copper and one part tin in it so I think I better get going here so. <laughs> Take your time. Okay. <laughs> so I've got a little pot with the molten metal in here, which I clear out a little bit now. Hold it with a little bit of willow. Get 
this burns any oxygen which is in the metal out, so it reduces the metal, makes it a nicer, nicer metal. We just have to let it cool down now. When you're uh, forging with iron, you can work it when it's red hot and it's, and it's quite malleable. Bronze is the opposite. If you work it when it's red hot, it just cracks. Right. It comes apart. You actually have to let it cool down and you can actually, you can forge bronze cold. You hammer it until it gets really hard. You'll see if you hammer it a bit too much, it'll start to crack. And then you bring it up to a red heat. It's called annealing it. It softens it again. So let that cool off or we can pop it into a, mm -hmm. the iron bucket over there behind yep. the chair. Oh, you can just unwrap it. Yeah. And how long does it take to, uh, to, to make the metal uh, uh If I would put cold bronze into that now, it would take only about half an hour, 40 minutes again. Ah, okay. So fairly quick, but the first time it takes a little bit longer. Right. I exp just explained about the different molds there that we used a uh, technique called lost wax, where we made it <coughs> in wax for us and then coated it. The first molds used in Ireland and basically in the Bronze Age were stone molds. So people would carve the pattern into a piece of stone and they would replicate it. You have two pieces, put them together and then put a bronze in there. And then you pop it out and you end up with a spearhead like that. See it fits perfectly. So that's the oldest type of mold used. And then the wax came a little bit later when people started to keep bees. Yeah. For mainly for the wax. Beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Should I lift, hold it up while you, if you push it? See if I can pry it out. Yeah, if you can hold it in there. Yeah, no, broke it. Yeah. Broke it in half. Yeah. yeah, it's really sticky up here. Uh, it's all right. Normally, you would break these molds to get the bronze out. I was just lucky that the first time I used it, it split perfectly in half. <laughs> so this is the second time I've used this mold. Normally you would just crush them right. and pop out. That's a bit hot. So those you can only mm -hmm. use once while the stone mold you can use over and over yeah. if they survive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Anyone for tea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's kind of grab it on the cup there. Mm. Oh. A little bit of a yeah. bubble in there. Right. It wouldn't have this much flashing, it only had that because the mold was already split in half. So the metal can, it's like water, it yeah. flow into any little gap. But normally that would just be a complete in case. Yeah, just you know, so you wouldn't you'd end up with this guy. That's the first time I cast it. So it's the same shape. It's based on.